Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about bad code quality in personal development. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Fredericks, uh, hi Frederick, thanks for a great channel and your dedicated work here. Thank you, you are welcome. I will probably find myself in a product company that is mostly just interested in getting the job done. Low quality is very acceptable, also there is no rush to meet deadlines. Will this hinder my learning when the seniors don't care for quality code? Yes and no. Uh, it's not going to hinder your learning per se, but you will miss out on something that you can't really take for granted in the first place, but it's worth knowing about it and this is one of those reasons why I say to people that it's good for you to do a little bit of professional traveling before you decide to retire. Well, it's, well it really comes down to if you want to push it uh, to the max. Let me explain that a little bit. Uh, so. I mean, I want you to realize something, and that is that if you have the ability to spot that code is bad, then per definition you have the skills to determine what's good and what's bad in terms of coding. And just think about that for a minute, because that basically means that you can spot bad software. And the thing that I love about bad software is that if you think about that problem in the correct fashion, well, if you think, think about it the wrong way, it's going to eat your soul. But if you think about it in the right manner, it really is no different from good software. It's just a problem that you need to solve. I'll tell you a secret. So, I am... I don't think I'm too far out there when I say that there's uh, a few people who would consider me fairly good at front-end development, as an example. Uh, among my co-workers, and I'm assuming some of you have seen my front-end videos and so forth. So, yes, like, uh, I, I know a few things about front-end. The majority of the stuff that I know about front-end and how I developed my skill or like my way of thinking about how to make bets in front end and how to structure things and so forth actually came from working in a really 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 bad code base you see when you work in a really co bad code base you're forced to make a decision either you become as you're saying like a senior who doesn't really care for the quality whatsoever you allow it to eat away at you until you become apathetic to the to the thing right and see that's the sort of thing that is really down to your personality and who you are as a person because the other way of looking at it is to see it as a challenge to figure out okay this is just another problem it's no different from trying to work with a really nice project. It's just that you have a different set of problems. And it's actually it's a healthy mindset for you to have that because you will never be able to create a perfect system. And the quicker you get away from this mental gremlin who tells you that, oh, this isn't perfect, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. It, as soon as you kill that motherfucker, you will actually be a better software developer because you cannot create perfect software, but what you can do is create really good software. And that's possible in a shitty code base as well. And it's actually funny because through the process of figuring out, okay, we have all of this legacy, we have all these issues and so forth, and I can spot that this is not working so well, well, uh, let's just turn that into something as slightly, as slight, you know, just slightly nicer. You will actually gain skills fairly substantial skills, uh, skills that most people will not have. Because as I said, the average software developer will, in such a scenario, quit uh, or become ap apathetic or just continue the mess, things like that. But that's on them. It's not, not, not There's nothing wrong with uh, doing that per se, but you're not going to develop the skills that I'm talking about. So that's the, in my opinion at the very least, the good part, because the thing is, it, just because you work with seniors, and that's the dirty secret for some of you who may not know that, guys, there are many seniors that suck ass. 
Well, not literal ass, but they are bad at what they do. Really bad. And bad to the point where it's embarrassing that they are allowed to use the term senior. And so working in a bad code base doesn't really matter for your skill development. And it's the same thing with working with bad seniors. Just because they are bad at their job or like they, they make really bad decisions or things like that, that has nothing to do with you. You can decide to not be one of those people. You can decide to try your best to make something sustainable. The only time you're actually going to find a problem with that or somebody getting your in your way is if you're actually in a confrontation with these sorts of people and then of course you probably have to go somewhere else but it's guys it's really rare that shitty software developers or shitty companies or so forth is gonna formulate an opinion on you trying to do better most of them are just gonna say that yeah that's kind of nice as long as you you know meet the deadlines and do all the stuff that causes the problem in the first place but you're still you still have some wiggle room which is very great for you because now you can take this as, as, as a challenge it's actually funny because uh, that's exactly how it kind of, how it went for me there was a software developer who had been working at my well it was one of my first jobs that's where i learned a lot, a lot of the stuff that i know about frontend and uh, he quit after a year. I think he was there for a year and he quit because the code base was so horrible. And then I took on the role and the, I'm not going to claim that it was perfect, but it was a hell of a lot better than when I started. And these days it's actually the same sort of thing. I took, um, I went into a team with, well, the intention was to make me the tech lead of that team. And there was an already working consultant, senior consultant, you know, who had been developing this system for, I think, like almost a year. And the first words out of his mouth was basically that the system is shit, management are idiots, everybody's arrogant and pricks and like nothing works and everything's blah blah blah. Yes, everything is horrible, horrible, horrible. And now I'm older and wiser than I was back way back when when I took my first job, but I still approach it the same way. And now it's about 6 months later. He got fired and the system has the highest quality of any of our systems well not all of them but it's among the highest quality systems that we have in terms of work processes in terms of code quality in terms of basic from all perspectives it's at the level where i'm very proud over the work that the team and myself included has done in order to make that happen so it's really not about you're gonna lose your skills and not get good just because you're working with bad code. It's really about you and your attitude towards those sorts of problems. The one thing, as I said, that you're not gonna get, but that has nothing to do with bad code, it has to do with the people that you work with, is that if you're not working with talented people, they will not teach you anything. They will be a challenge to you, they will hinder you, and you know, for those of you who do strength training, resistance is good, but they're not going to teach you anything and honestly it's really great if you can find software developers who are so good that they actually teach you stuff but you shouldn't bet on it you should try to be your own inspiration try to be your own mentor if that makes sense because it's going to be a more sustainable strategy for you than trying to you know find that magical mentor that is going to teach you all the things so what i want you to take away from this is that nope your learning will not be hindered by working in a shitty company or a shitty code base or with bad seniors or something like that. The only thing that's going to hinder your learning is your attitude towards your own skill development. The biggest bane, if there is such a thing, towards your personal skill development is going to be down to two things. Number one, complacency. Because you are going to go from being a junior who's scared of everything to a mid-level who thinks that you know everything. Well, maybe not everything, but you're going to feel pretty good about yourself at some point or feel confident. And then you're going to realize that you're not scared of fucking up all the time, which is going to, in many, for many of you, that's going to mean that, oh yeah, but I'm making money. I don't really have to. You're, you're, the lazy side of you is going to set in if you're not careful. That's number one. The number one skill killer. The second thing is that you stop trying to do good job do a good job and that's exactly what I'm talking about that's how you get to be a really shitty senior you stop trying stop learning 
you stop caring or you get demotivated or something like that you use whatever excuse you have right uh, to justify the f the very simple fact that you are no longer all that interested in doing a good job or like pushing it further or you take on a role or something like that that isn't really going to hone your skills and these are the two thi the two main things that are going to dictate how far you go in terms of skill and as I said all of that is about you it's not about anything else have a great day